And continuing our tax coverage, the IRS released its 2023 Dirty Dozen Roundup of tax scams and schemes to watch out for. This year, here with some tips uh, on avoiding fraud, is Yahoo Finance's Ali Garfunkel. Ali? Hi, Inez. So fraud is a particular problem during tax season, and there are kind of a couple of reasons why, but I think the key one is that we don't all have a lot of experience dealing with the IRS. So we don't necessarily know, for instance, how they'll be in touch. It's also an incredibly stressful time that I think cam scammers are likely to spend time trying to exploit when they can. And we know for a fact that this is true because the numbers back it up. For instance, in 2022 alone, the IRS identified 5.7 billion in tax fraud and they're expecting an even higher number this year. So I think it's worth walking through what some of kind of the key scams that we're likely to see are. Um, the first is, you're gonna hear is, we've all talked about phishing emails, I feel like, but phishing emails are absolutely a tax-related scam that we'll see. Um, a lot of the time, what they will be asking is to verify your information. Um, however, it is unlikely the IRS will send you an email and scammers will pretend to be the IRS in that email and can lead you even to a page that looks like an IRS website but it is, not an e it is not the IRS, it is a phishing email. Um, the second one to consider is, remember tax returns are often filed online. I believe it's more than 90% of tax returns that are filed online. So the other one to consider is that taxes being filed under your name is something that could happen even if you didn't do it. Now, this is actually much more common than you might think. It was surprising to me because last year in 2022, there were 7.8 million reports of tax-related suspicious activity tied to identity theft. Um, and the last one is one that I we've all gotten a robocall. You can get a tax robocall demanding money. Um, that is something that the IRS will never, ever do. So that's something to be aware of. So there's a lot, I've gone through a lot of things about like what you can't do, but what can you do, right? And I think that's important to talk about too. And I think there are a lot of best practices. In general, I, I personally recommend identity monitoring, um, fraud protection. I have all of those things personally. The other thing is there are certain things that scammers will do that you can identify when you get, for instance, a phishing email. For example, if someone's claiming your social security number has been, has been revoked or canceled, that is impossible. That never happens. If you get an email or a call saying your social security number is canceled, it is a scam. Next, in emails, check the from line. Now, what does that mean? You know the part at the top of the email where it says, okay, this is who the email's from? Hover your cursor over that name and check the email address. If it is not from a .gov email address, it is, a, it is very likely a scam. And last, don't trust caller ID. This is really hard for me. I trust caller ID very, very staunchly. Um, but the reality is caller ID can also be faked. There are, fr there are frequently a lot of robocalls out there, worlds of thousands of robocalls that can call you and demand money for taxes. So don't trust your caller ID. I realize this is, this is a lot of information, but the bottom line is be aware and don't let the stress of tax season make you more vulnerable to just clicking something because you're afraid or worried that you owe money that you don't owe yet. And just remember, the IRS won't ever call you, so... so you have it to... will occasionally. It's very rare, but it does happen. I, but they will try to get in touch with you via email first. Okay, thanks so much. Mail, Allie. snail mail. That is snail mail, not email, snail, snail mail. Snail mail, not emails. I'm just so used to talking about email. <laughs> thanks, Allie Garfinkel. And we are wrapping up the week's Ultimate Tax Guide tomorrow with Kathy Pigering, uh, HR Block Chief Tax Officer. She's got all the tips you need to start planning for next year's taxes. You won't want to miss it.